Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and this has been a long time coming. <laughs> this is that. Derek. So I saw your car, obviously, and went, what the hell is that? I started to dig in a little bit. I backed out of it quickly and went, now I'm gonna wait for Derek to tell me about this. So explain. Well, a lot of what you'll read about it is wrong. Really? Yeah. A lot of it's inaccurate. This is based on a 1982 GT. It's an M81, a McLaren Mustang DSO. The DSO meaning dealer special order. I guess I'll start from the beginning. There was a prototype that was made, first saw the light of day in early 1980. It was orange, you know, the papaya orange with the silver two-tone, but it was a turbo four-cylinder. They were trying to get back into motorsports and needed something, kind of a wow car. Yeah. So they hired this guy named Gary Coase, who had a company called uh, Marketing Corp. Very original name. <laughs> they basically built prototypes. He talked to an artist friend of his named Harry Wikes. Harry Wikes and Todd Gerstenberger designed this on a piece of paper. Gary Coase went to McLaren Engines and said, hey, we want to build this car. Would you want to build the engines for it? Then they got this well-known race car builder, IMSA race car builder, this guy named Ron Fournier. He came in and he got his friend, Bob Feehan. So the two of those guys built this car in steel as a prototype. Ford went to them and said, okay, we need to make more of these. <laughs> the marketing idea was that they were gonna build 250 of them total. They were like $25,000 in 1980, so do the math. $100,000, Batman. They made 10 of them before the program was killed. The other part of the program, what this car is, was the dealer special order program where they were going to basically send them out to dealers as a kid. And the dealers would assemble the cars, but it was like going to be a select program, only like performance oriented. Right. So like a Copo or, or yeah, whatever, and similar then, concept. And then according to Bob Feehan, the DSO program never really got off the ground, partly because of internal politics partly because the car was way too expensive. I don't think there were more than 20 of these sent out to dealers. I know, I don't know, maybe four or five, including this one that are still on the road. Wow. Ford killed the, the program, but then they wanted uh, Marketing Corp to build a couple V8 versions of this as a show car because they were switching to the five liter. On this one specific, along with the wild body elements, <laughs> I mean, because it is wild. It's, it's yeah. really radical how, I it's, mean, that it's sucker a, is. It's, it screams David Lee Roth, Van Halen yeah. era. Yeah, I'm the wrong one to ask, because for one, I love flared cars. I love wide bodies. The Capri was a pretty bitchin' car when they, when they you know, when yeah. they did their Fox body thing. And this reminds me of the Capri, the shape well, of the I'm, flares. I'm thinking the... that there was some cross inspiration. No question. Yeah, they took the hood from this and toned it down. And... Yeah, so now along with the physicality of it, is this mechanically different than like an 80s, an early 80s Fox body? Oh, I gutted it. I mean, it's, it's, it had a five liter in it in really bad shape. Let's pop the hood while yeah. we're talking about it. I'm curious to see what, oh so shit. It's a Blueprint Engines 347 stroker. Oh, dude. BBK, Fuck yeah, BBK is all BBK I short, can say to that. BBK shorty headers, new air conditioning, big radiator, and uh, Tremec T56 Magnum. Bitchin', so you made it a driver's car. Well, I wanted to make it a you know hot rod. We got an 8.8 .8 out of a late 80s GT with uh, limited slip put 373 gears in it, SN95 spindles, and obviously five lug conversion and the uh, like 94 Cobra brakes. Oh, Suspension? The big thing is full Maximum Motorsports max grip. Sure, kit. sure. I yeah. mean, subframe connectors, uh, torque arm, and then, you know, tubular control arms up front, a tubular K-member, and then uh, I-box sways front and rear. It's, wow. It's a massive kit. Yeah, no, you've done. And then rotiforms. The really bitchin' rotiforms. Badass. And then a custom X pipe and magna flows to the back. Nice. Because the car, the little bit I already heard it, sounds really good. Yeah, sounds it's kind of quiet. It's kind of it's quiet at idle, and then and then when you it gets a little in. rowdy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Holly sniper. Uh, EFI. Oh, so nice. Everything you're saying to me, and we were joking about it before, I'm not a mechanical guy, oh, but no. I understand stuff well enough to know everything you're mentioning to me is like, oh yeah, that's the yeah. smart stuff to do here. I didn't, well, it was a lot of my sort of 
planning, and then also I had a bunch of help from Efren at ER Performance. Yeah. He did all the mechanical work. I'm a Porsche dude, air-cooled Porsche guy. So like, yeah. I bought this and I'm like, man, I gotta learn about crap can muscle cars from the 80s now. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> Cause it is, let's be honest, and any of you guys that want to get pissed about this, you know, no, I, this deal is my with third it. Fox body. I just want but to look, say, but, but that era of American car was not a great era for Americans. You know that no. that eighties into early nineties was really kind of shit for the most part. Even the Grand Nationals, which are beloved cars, yeah, they're not great. They yeah. have to be. They have to be well, messed with. I mean, to make think them about great. it. The five liter that originally came in this car, two hundred horsepower. Yeah. Like 150, yeah. 155. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, a two barrel carburetor. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The story is. I had just turned six years old. The 1980, December 1980 cover of Motor Trend had the McLaren Mustang prototype on the cover and a huge article about it. Ever since then, I wanted one of these so bad, but they never exist, you know? Like, and I was a kid in Iowa, I was never gonna see one of these. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I went through a couple in high school and college and then- But, but how badass to get one of your dream cars. Dude. Oh yeah, that I doesn't, mean- A lot of us don't ever get that. And I that. chased this car for, Seven years, six, no seven kidding. Years, yeah. And then went down the rabbit hole on building it. Yeah, and <laughs> I'd never even seen one until it came on the truck. I love this body kit that they did on here. I think it's absolutely spectacular. And the body is as I bought it. So you haven't had to do paint or anything on it? No, I, this paints, I have no idea how old it is. Maybe 20 <laughs> years old. It was kind of a show car for the latter half of its life. I love your wheel choice too. What would you go size wise on here? What are they? 10. An 11 by 18, nice. Rotiform LHR. And what do you run tire size wise here? 275, 35, and 305, 35. Nice. Yeah, 305's plenty. And I mean, with that engine, you're probably what, 500 ish horsepower? Maybe? I wish. No, it's 400, straight out of the crate. There's nothing done to it. Got so, it. So, I mean, okay, sure. not really my goal with this. It was more just like make it fun, handle well enough that it won't kill me. Yeah, uh, my yeah. initial I, concept was like a canyon car. You know, yeah, but, sure. And then the well, deeper- Well, you're an Yeah, so it yeah, makes yeah. sense you'd be thinking yeah. in that realm. But then the further I get into it and the longer I have it, the more I realize how kind of precious it is. It makes me scared to drive it. <laughs> you know it's an irreplaceable car. I mean, it's like when I roll around in that 356, I'm half of me is going, this is the greatest thing ever. Half of me is scared to death that God forbid something happens. Yeah. There's one less of those on the planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? This falls into that same exact space. And does exhaust dump out? Oh, it does come all yeah. the way out the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to be pseudo period correct, you know, for except, sure. for the, except for the wheels, obviously. Yeah. But I wanted it to just sort of like be 1982. Oh, this is so bitching, dude. I'm so glad we finally got to this. <laughs> Oh, this is... Now, is this stock seats in here? Well, not stock to the GT, but those are the Recaros that came with it. Super comfortable. But, I mean, the upholstery, when I got it, kind of horrendous. It was oh, all was it? gray and, like, quilted door patterns. And, yeah, I redid the whole interior. I had my guy, Moro, redo the seats. I found that gradient fabric online, and Recaro yelled at me about it because it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bitching, dude. I dig it. Is there anything original in the interior or has it all been replaced? All the door panels have been replaced. Yeah. I just redid the dash pad, uh, just recovered it. And then I pretty much just painted everything. Like the all the interior pieces were in really good shape. What I wanted to do was I wanted to make it look like the original four cylinder McLarens. But you know, yeah. like the race mark wheel, that's what they had. Now they had four speeds in them. <laughs> I've yeah. upgraded it a little bit. There, you go. there we go. Slick, super simple, fit right in there. This is so cool. This is such a neat car, man. And it's got the, the, the where's little, the release the at? I haven't seen that stupid release in forever. Oh, I know. Ever. You're gonna love this, <laughs> the horn. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to be all European and everything with it, remember? Oh man, you know, I'm a kid of the 80s, dude. It's so friggin' 80s. I just, so badass, man. Well, we're gonna go for a drive, you guys. <laughs> Hey guys, if you're anything like me, it means you live a really busy lifestyle. So when it's time to eat, you're resorting to things like fast food, which has gotten ridiculously expensive, or you're resorting to restaurant delivery services, any number of them that are available, and that gets really expensive. So it's why I wanna introduce you to Factor. Factor delivers food directly to your house, fresh, quality, 
And most importantly, in my opinion, it tastes great and it's super healthy. And in a matter of minutes, you've got a meal to eat that you'll guaranteed enjoy. And I promise you, it's gonna save you an absurd amount of money over what you would pay at fast food or restaurant delivery services. So down in the description, and there's gonna be a pinned comment to guide you exactly where you need to go. Factor75.com and make sure to use the code ATLA50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. All right, man, let's jump back into today's video. Gets a little taller. Yeah, it's yeah. a good like cruising around gear. Which makes sense though, those first couple of gears to get out of the hole and yeah. spin tire if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Although with, with our Triple H, you probably oh. try to not do it too often. Uh, when they're cold, they spin pretty quick. Oh, I'll bet they do, yeah. So far, dude, this car feels, I mean, obviously I've had two minutes of seat time yeah. and driving very mild, but it's, the car's stiff. Like you definitely notice that you're in a performance that's, car. That's the Max Motorsport stuff. Coney coilovers, subframe connectors, all the go fast bits <laughs> that they had. The only thing I didn't do was uh, an IRS setup, which I don't know, maybe one day I will. Such a geek, I swear this the slightest little bit of acceleration and I instantly start to get a smile on my face. <laughs> it's so dumb. But... Dude, this car drives great. I mean obviously I'm barely putting my foot in yeah. it, but it's that like I said, it, it's 400, but the car's light enough. When you're you know, geared right, you're totally yeah. geared right. It had it had a 350 set in it before and it just felt too sluggish. Tall, a little sluggish. Yeah, sure. But I mean, even this, like a simple sweeping turn, cars like... Oh, it's real stable. You can tell you, you guys have put time into this car. Efren is his name? Yeah, the yeah. ER performance. He's been extremely helpful in this. Again, I'm gonna beat it like a dead horse. I come from driving Porsches, and I talked to the guys at Max Motorsports, and I was like, I wanted to drive like a 964. Can we do that? Is that possible? Right. <laughs> and it's almost there. The, the steering rack, I, I don't know, I need to do something different with that. I mean, it handles fine, it's just the the, feedback on the steering I'm not quite happy with. Got it. I don't know. I'm the guy that would go, oh yeah, let's go straight to the canyon and go see yeah, what it's I about. But I, I understand, dude. It, there is the process of, like you're doing, sorting the car there's, out. There's part of me that this car is cursed. Like, it really doesn't want me to <laughs> drive it that much. It doesn't want you to win. I, was, I just went out to clean it up, like, you know, two days ago. And I, I pull the car out and there's a spot of fluid and I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I take the wheel off and my caliper's leaking. I'm like, and I'm like, I've got this shoot. I've been putting you off for a year. I'm not going to now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this car, like I'm, I, 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 it's really flat. I hate it because I, 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 my promise to myself is I don't allow myself to fall in love with other people's cars. <laughs> I really don't, I, and, and like, but I'm totally falling in love with this thing. I think it's so, you've done a hell of a job, bro, honestly. This is, I thought it would feel a bit more 80s. Wishy-washy? Yes. Yeah. 
No, I wanted all of that gone. You've, you've, like, really, really wonderful. custom cars when you think about it it's like you take a car you know pretty much will go hundreds of thousands of miles right and you yeah. go yeah but I want to make it faster perform better and steer better and all this stuff so you change everything and now you've just thrown all your reliability completely yeah, out it, the window until now you go through all the yeah, all the hours really of did. shakedown the first one was the, the Porsche I went through that for a couple of years yeah. And then I'd do something stupid like take it to a rally in Mexico, you know, or just wow. multiple times. Wow. Really? Oh, yeah. Good times. This thing, I'm still kind of like, what's going to happen next? Got it. For any of you guys that have never been through the process, it is the process of custom cars. I don't care if you build it yourself or somebody else builds it. There it's, is a process to it, you know? It's an, it's an endless stream of what now? What now? You got it. <laughs> shoot this car it finally happened and I'm stoked we got to do this I think not only the rarity and the unique element of this car but I love what he built this is a total driver car and yeah we weren't banging on it but again it's a rare car and he's still in the early shakedown miles of it so I hope you guys enjoyed and appreciated just what this car is and as always I say thanks for hanging and watching I appreciate you guys being here and I'll see you in the next episode All right, man. Later.